thank you so much for coming um, to Mondialité Readings, which is our day, which functions for, in several ways. It's it's a, a finissage to the uh, to the exhibition that we that we curated here at the villa. It's also a celebration of the of the the book, the French book Mondialité ou les archipels d'Edouard Glissant. And so it's really a tribute to Glissant, his thinking, his influence on many different people and his influence on many different kinds of practices from intellectual to uh, choreographic to artistic to novelistic. And so we're hoping that that spectrum of different things will somehow create a picture of the, the, the breadth of influence and the importance of the ideas of Edouard Glissant. And of course, it's a huge pleasure to be here with my co-curator, Hans Ulrich Obrist, who maybe wants to also say some words in introduction. But first, to for me, very shortly, since we have a long program and many people, just thank you very much for coming here uh, for this final day from Mondialité. Thank you very much, uh, Asad, and indeed, thank you all for, for being here. We thought it would be nice to you know, begin this exhibition and end this exhibition uh, here in uh, Brussels, actually, with two very polyphonic days, because uh, Edouard Grissant loved this idea of uh, polyphonic, multilinguist events. So we're going to have different languages today, many different you know, views and, and, and positions on, uh, on Grissant. Very grateful to our speakers, Ramon Bazan and Douglas Copeland, who are already with us, our first speakers today, um, followed by Vincent Depre, by Anker Fritz and Dirk Snauer, uh, then Agnes B., Mark Nash, Isaac Julian, Manfred Yavara, Ren Kohas, Patrick Chamazo, Mette Edwardson, and Justin Smith, as well as Esther Salomon. Please give them all a very, very warm welcome. Um, yes, uh, uh, I think it uh, shouldn't be about me, but uh, yes, it is true that maybe I'm uh, an untypical, I consider myself an untypical uh, Dutchman, but maybe also an untypical Westerner in the sense that uh, a crucial part of my youth uh, was spent in the uh, recently independent country of Indonesia. And so that therefore I've lived uh, the idea of an archipelago from the age of eight to 12, uh, part of a family that was obliged to travel a lot. Uh, and so therefore, not only did we, for instance, travel on Java and kind of realize that on that single island there were maybe 200 languages and uh, vastly different architectures, but we also traveled to the main islands, uh, Sumatra, Sulebes, Bali, uh, and uh, Borneo, and, and uh, even West Iran. Uh, and it was therefore an absolutely stunning but in the end, even the surprise wore off that anywhere you went, you were in a totally different environment with certain similarities, uh, of course, but kind of radical differences in emotions, in smells, in food, in sounds, in nature, in religion, in ceremonies, in kindness, in animals, in, in other words, an, an unbelievable variety uh, that uh, be, be became a kind of daily fact of life and I think that uh, deeply formed my character and that kind of the moment I kind of returned to the Netherlands uh, seemed to be a kind of horrendously single-minded uh, kind of linear Cartesian uh, and systematizing uh, culture in which I never really felt uh, completely at home. 